My first records were, I guess, I bought some 45s in the late 60s and uh, mid late 60s. Then my really, I started getting into records, you know, when I got probably my first stereo when I was probably like 12 or 13. After, after the Beatles played Ed Sullivan, it pretty well changed everything for his music, you know. And I, at the time, you know, I, I wasn't quite old enough to totally get it, but but I definitely saw saw the excitement. I remember getting a stereo for Christmas, and I remember getting two albums for Christmas, and thought that was like two albums, wow. <laughs> but after that, it was on. I started buying records a lot after that. I mean, John B. Lee's downtown. I hang in that. I would go to that store and stay in there for hours. And I mean, they had a setup where that you could listen to the 45s, you know, before you bought them. And I remember, and and, rec and albums too. But mainly 45s is what people bought back then, and then I, you would pop them on and listen to them, and you'd buy them. I remember I just started buying records, and I got $20 for my birthday, and I went straight to John B. Lee's and uh, buying four albums. And, and I remember my mom thought, thought I'd lost my mind because <laughs> I blew that whole $20 on records. <laughs> First album I ever bought. Um, was Grand Funk Live. The, the music I know most about are obviously from the 60s, 70s, and in the 80s too, of course, but the best music ever made was from like 67 to 72. Those five years were the most important years of rock music to me. The reason I got into the business because I loved it, and, uh, and I really got lucky because I met a person from Atlanta that had owned a couple of stores. He was basically said, let's open a store. And um, we become partners when we first opened that store. You know, we were partners. But after a year, it was it was a pretty good struggle to start because we couldn't have picked a worse time to open. It was during a recession. And it was the worst time possible. After about a year, we saw that it just wasn't enough income for both of us. So one of us had to buy the one, other one out. So I basically borrowed the money and bought him out. To me, what I thought would be the death of my business was to something that made it take off and that was the CD when it come to the picture. I said I didn't think I would be able to afford stocking CDs you know in my store and um, and and I thought well gosh all I know is records and I said I don't know this part about the CDs you know just uh, uh, anyway when it I went out and got a loan for it and bought some merchandise and uh, it took off and that's when the business really took off in, in the late 80s. My biggest my biggest seller was in 93 and that was obviously this this had to do with CDs and and the business in general too. That's when people were that's when the car stereo was the biggest. I'm sure it was during that time, you know. And it was Snoop Dogg. The comeback of vinyl is probably the biggest surprise because I did not see that coming you know, at all, you know, and especially with the young people buying them, you know, with with the high school college age that are buying them. It's, it's, it's very surprising. This world always wants everything to be easy and the records are definitely not easy. To, you know, you got to flip. You listen to 20 or 30 minutes of music on each side and you flip it over and listen to it. You, you can't get around that. You know, where a CD you just pop it in play, you can skip to the next track. You got to lift a needle up, put it to the next track, that kind of thing on a record. No doubt the best form of, you know, of sound quality would be the record, but but you got to have a pretty decent stereo to really, you know, appreciate it. I did not see that that um, that downloading would would be so devastating to the record business. You know, I mean, I saw I saw it coming, but I thought, well, it'll take you know, it'll take 10 or 15, 20 percent of the business. I did not think it would take more like it did. It, how much it took? I mean, I, it probably took 50 percent of the business. That, this business has been like been like a roller coaster. It's been up and down, you know. For tw for 34 years, you're gonna get that. So that's just the way it is. 81 to 1999, I had an increase every year. But 2001, after 9/11, that's when the business, the bottom fell out. You know, the record business changed so much. Thank goodness I had a wife that was patient and <laughs> and helped me out like she did, no doubt. CDs are still my main seller, and that's a lot of loyal customers through the years still coming by, you know, music from me, which uh, I made a lot of good friends and met a lot of good people. Thank goodness I got good help 
with the person that works for me now, which, which is Ellis. You know, he's he's a good employee. He's helped out a lot, no doubt. And I've had good employees through the years, and some duds, of course, too. But <laughs> but uh, but most of the people I've hired through the years have been been good people. I've been lucky in that part. This record business is still a very fragile. It's a hard business to be in right now. It's still very hard because you got you better know what you're doing because it's not a it's not an easy business at all. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure most anybody that's in the record business would say that.